Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Oh, hi. You just caught me unnecessarily camping someone in Dead by Daylight. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry. Just like Tamagotchis, the floss, and wearing a tie clip when you're wearing a waistcoat, camping is actually cool. Let's check the after game chat to confirm. Oh, well, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Maybe it's not widely known outside of the killer community that camping is actually a good thing. Hopefully this video will set that straight. As we all know, communities are made up of different groups of people. The goths, the jocks, the cool kids. But with Dead by Daylight, it's safe to assume this community is made up exclusively of one particular social group, the geeks. And whether you're a metadata geek, a juking geek, or a shit talking geek, we're all pretty much the same. And when a community is made up of one particular geek type or another, Deciding the packing order needs to be based on something other than whether you have a PC, wear check shirts and glasses, or have such an anemically pasty complexion you give Gollum a run for his money. Those tricksy tricksy hobbitses! Luckily, the Dead by Daylight community has naturally found its own solution, with many ways to measure someone's good standing and reputation. The volume of plus and negative rep comments on their Steam profile whether you make useful or hilarious video content about the game. And, of course, total hours played, which as we all know is the geek equivalent of sneakily taking a glance at someone else in the locker room to see if you've got a bigger dick than them. Phew. However, you'll be relieved to know that you won't have to sneak a glance at someone else's todger this time round. There's a far simpler way of knowing someone's standing in the community. Do they camp? If they camp, you should salute them and fear them in equal measures because you're dealing with one of the most respected players in the Dead by Daylight community. There's a special place reserved for such exquisite gameplay, and that's the highest echelon of noble gaming royalty. It's clear from trawling the Steam forums that playing Dead by Daylight creates negative, aggressive, pent-up energy that can make people feel pretty glum. Check out these guys. I'm getting tired of all the posts saying no ad OP, then getting the reply, cleanse tokens, and then the final argument it's a waste of time if the killer doesn't have it. I smell something. Oh yeah, I know what it is. It's an unbelievable amount of salt coming towards this thread. Huh, that's interesting. I didn't realize people could smell salt. Those pesky survivors, completing generators, running away, leaving through the exit gates. How very dare they. Well, fear not, dear friends, because I have the perfect solution for you. And it'll get rid of that naughty stress and anxiety faster than a chamomile tea and a wank. After all, a frustrated killer makes for a terrible gameplay experience. So relieving that tension should be priority number one for everyone in the match. Here are the roles we must play. As survivor. When your first survivor found, give up immediately. Under no circumstances should you drop a pallet, teabag or loop. Allow the killer to down you, get thrown on the hook, then chill and take pride in knowing you've played your part in diffusing what could be a tough day for the person on the other side of those sinister, disengaged eyes. As a killer. Find your first survivor, down them, throw them on the hook, and stay with them until they're sacrificed. And relax. As you lose a pip, and everyone else escapes. <sighs> There's truly nothing worse than playing a game with someone who's just not taking it seriously. Like that time I was playing Ben and Ed Blood Party and kept on knocking that random child from the internet into the fire. <laughs> Sorry. It's a co-op! Damn it! Do, 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 do. Oh sure, because you're perfect. But playing with intent in Dead by Daylight isn't the only way to optimize the gameplay experience for your adversaries. Here are some other examples. Number one, 
tunnel the first survivor you find and force them to rage quit. Keep an eye out for an upcoming video about how awesome rage quitting is. Subscribe now so you don't miss it. Number two, use ruin every game. And naturally, number three, camp. And there's one more thing we humans crave for an enriched gameplay experience, it's consistency. For example, it would be somewhat perplexing in a new game if you jumped off a cliff and died the first time, then got all the best weapons, unlimited ammo and the best possible armor upgrades the next. Hmm. Little else offers greater consistency in gaming than camping, and dislike it as you may, we all know that camping in Dead by Daylight is like Michael Jackson in the Neverland Ranch. It's bad, it's bad, it's really, really bad, but love never felt so good. Hee <laughs> hee! So take note, my fellow killer mains. If you don't want to inspire a state of baffled delirium in poor survivors by hooking one and looking for another, be sure you cloak, crouch, or use Insidious to sneakily stick around and take their altruism by surprise. <laughs> We've all been new, and therefore dreadful, at some things at some points in our lives. Just like when you're learning to swim, ride a bike, or masturbate. Who wrote this? But being new to Dead by Daylight is likely a hazy collection of memories, wrapped up in tension and locked away in a creepy little music box, with that freaky music playing like it needs to be wound up and all gross and bleh. He <laughs> really already wrong. It's no wonder in that case that people have forgotten that when they first started out, they actively wanted to be camped, bringing a timely end to the anxiety, heart palpitations, and uncontrollable diarrhea. Uh, just me with a diarrhea? Okay. And with the beginner's experience of Dead by Daylight being so truly terrifying, there's honestly no better way of easing them into the game than camping the living shit out of them. Oh hey, welcome to the neighborhood. Have a pleasant stay! Um, yes, I, I am still here. Oopsie, you're dead! Some may argue that there are other, far more suitable ways of introducing new players to Dead by Daylight. Debatably, ways that will inspire loyalty and create the new generation of fans to carry the torch for the next three years. If you're one of those people, I have a message for you from me and my fellow campers. F*** you. Just in case you haven't got the message about how cool camping truly is, and you still think you can argue the case against it, here's a list of times when you should be in no way surprised whatsoever that you are being camped. Number 1. When you've been teabagging after every single throne pallet. Number 2. When you have the great misfortune of being hooked by the exit gate. Number 3. When you're a streamer. As an aside, you should also expect stream sniping and rude comments in the pre-game lobby from your would-be teammates before they rage quit on you. Number 4. When you run away for longer than 20 seconds. I mean, come on, don't they know you're supposed to give up immediately? Just stop running! As a little aside, if you have even a shred of doubt about your camping escapades, fear not. You can rebrand from a hardcore camper to a soft pussy hatch giver with relative ease. Simply delete the negative rep comments from your Steam profile, change your username to those weird squares, and get some cognitive behavioral therapy paid for by your mum. Could you also ask for my underwear back at the same time, please? Well, I hope I've managed to convince you that camping is cool, and I look forward to de-pipping each time I see you in my killer lobbies. If you haven't already watched it, maybe you'd consider viewing the first of this series. It's called How to Get a GG in Dead by Daylight. You can vote for more content like this by subscribing right now. And you can also support its creation and see the content earlier by becoming a patron. Maybe you'd consider that. And also, if you want to hang out with me in the different social media platforms that I take part in, then they're in the description below. And I want to finish off with a few thank yous as well. So. Thank you to those who donated footage to make this video possible, they're on the screen now. Also to Orange City One for donating Dead by Daylight to our May giveaway on Twitch, and generally being so supportive and proactive. Come join us on Twitch for future giveaways. Also, thank you to Russ and Brad for working on the stupid funny montages. They're released every other week, so subscribe if you want to catch them when they go up. And a final thank you to everyone who supports me on Twitch and Discord, especially our moderators, in particular Embo and Shiny, who are the longest standing mods. You're all bloody ace, I cannot thank you enough. Right, that's enough gushing. Uh, let me sign off and say that 
As always, I have been Ed Fire. You have been amazing, and I will see you again next time.